what 60% of people can't come up with a thousand dollars in the case of emergency. So you might be wanting to try to get to a million, but you're going to be crossing a whole bunch of milestones that a lot of people are trying to get to getting to that point. I love talking about increasing your net worth. This is our barometer for wealth building success. Today, we're going to speak with an investor who has grown his family's net worth to over $900,000 by age 35 years old. Joshua Weekly is our guest today. Joshua lives in Arizona with his wife, Carly, and their two kids. And when he's not building his family's wealth. He enjoys spending time with his family and watching movies. Welcome to the show, Joshua. Thanks, Andy. Looking forward to talking about it. Absolutely, man. Thank you for being here and thank you for sharing your transparent story to help others win like you have. Now, looking back, Joshua, what was your motivation for building your wealth in the first place? I think I saw my parents, uh, their interaction with money a lot growing up. They uh, would have a Dave Ramsey video. My parents are deaf and they would had a Dave Ramsey video that had an interpreter signing everything. So they would have it on every so often. I would kind of pick up a few things here and there. But more importantly, I would see some of the advice they wouldn't follow. And then I would see, okay, they talked about buying a car this way. They bought a new car. Now there's a struggle for money here. So there was a lot of, I want to make sure that I have money so I can support my family because my dad was a good role model for that. It also made the knowledge very clear of, I want to be able to go to my kids' activities when they have them and not be like, okay, I have to go to work in order to get this paycheck to put food on the table. So I wanted to have more freedom in my life as I got older. I I love that. Yeah. So you, you saw that example and then you also saw, Hey, with accumulating your wealth or just having control of your money, you can also control your time. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, let's talk about what you guys uh, have done for income over the past uh, you know, 10, 15 years of your career. What, what do you do for income? And, and then what does your spouse do as well? Uh, so for about the last decade or so, I've been an engineer, layout engineer uh, for circuits. Uh, and then the five years before that was just serving. And my wife has her own photography business that she runs for the last... 12 or so years. So that's been her main source of income as well. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So these sound like great careers that are both fulfilling and uh, help, helping you guys build wealth too. So what was your general household income range during this net worth building time? I would say when we first started, when we were both servers, it was like 35, 40,000 combined. Mm-hmm. And then now we're probably a little bit over 200. Awesome. That's great. Incredible. Very cool. Now, can you, when, when people hear 900,000 plus net worth, they're not quite sure what exactly that means. Can you break down what your net worth mm-hmm. is for us today? What assets do you have? Let's start, so I guess we can start be, with the assets. Why don't we start with the assets? Yeah. That would be divided around 400,000 in home equity, a little bit over that, about 300,000 in retirement accounts, uh, Roth IRAs, 401ks. And then a little over a hundred in a brokerage account, and then about sixty to seventy thousand in savings, checkings accounts. Awesome, awesome. So investments, home equity, brokerage, and then cash. Um, yep. That that's incredible. So talk to us about this investing side of things. How has that made this wealth building process easier for you? And then how did you get started? So I used to be when I first started, be very more focusing on the savings versus the investing. And then when I went to buy a home and then it was like, well, what's your net worth? At that point, I was like, let me look up that. (laughs) And so that's when I really started, okay, let's see, this is what this number allows you to build. This is what freedom it allows. And so from there, I really started digging into the net worth and how to get that growing when I'm not working. And so getting the investments and starting to see the dividends build slowly, very slowly at the beginning. But once you get to that point where the you've made the snowball big enough and you start seeing it really start accumulating, that's where you start getting even more appreciative that you've put in the hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when, when you were starting that process, did you feel a little bit of a... Uh, analysis paralysis where you're like, I don't know where to start. Do I buy individual stocks? Do I buy this? How do I, I, did you feel any of that? And then how did you overcome that? So I didn't go with individual stocks. I use a robo advisor, uh, Wealthfront. Awesome. Because I try to keep it very as simple as possible and just focus on more of the behavioral of, okay, I'm saving this percentage of my income. I'm putting it here. Yes, it's nice to maximize returns, but focus on saving the amount first and then focus on the returns. 
Because I think once you build the habits of getting to a certain percentage, you can focus on improving your rate of return. But as far as like teaching the behavior of, okay, don't go out to dinner for the third time this week. If, if you need to make that investment account, like you start learning your stressors and where to pull back when you need. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's good to have some automation in the process too. It sounds like Wealthfront probably provides that mm -hmm. for you. Can we, can we jump over to the liability side? What debts do you have today? Uh, and, and what are they, if you have any? Uh, it's just the remaining mortgage on the house. 180. 180. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. So that is our assets minus our liabilities gets us to that around 900 and what did you say? 950, 900, $900,000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible, man. So you are a shade away from hitting that billionaire status. Yeah. Are you, are you looking forward to that? Are you still tracking that? Does it mean anything to you? Talk to us about that. <laughs> Am I still tracking that? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> of course. I'm on a podcast was... <laughs> talking about my net worth, man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is the first time I've ever done it. So I'm, I'm very excited, but I was sad that Mint uh, went away earlier oh, this year because I had started too. on Mint from the beginning. And in my head, mentally, I was definitely like, you know, how it would show you if you click at the beginning from you when you started, you've made this much on Mint. In my head, I'd always been like, okay, one day I'll be able to click it and be like, it's grown a million. And I was so close. And then they decided to shut down. So that was oh, nice. Of man. <laughs> oh. Did you transition to something or is, or, is, or is Wealthfront also provide that to you? Do you use another budgeting system now? So I try, I've, I have Wealthfront as like a, a backup and mm -hmm. personal capital I've tried over the years. I'm trying Monarch. Uh, we'll see how I feel over. It's still the growing pains at the beginning of mint since I've used it for so long, everything was exactly how I wanted it. And now for Monarch, it's like, okay, this is doubled. This transaction is in the wrong. So it's, it just takes some time to get it all sorted. I hear you. I almost feel like I was so into mint that I need to have like a funeral or something. I need to have a grief. You know, I need to say goodbye. I need to bury something into the ground. I need to have a grieving process. It's, I was uh, it's the same as you, man. I had it for 10 plus years. Everything was in there. Uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've grown on Monarch over the past six months or so. We did some transitions of all of our all of our transactions in there, which has helped from the history, but the net worth side of things, it's, it's not the same. It's like, mm -hmm. it's went from zero to where we are today. And I'm like, Oh man, I really missed that history. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah, feel you. I 100%. feel you. Now you have a couple of kids and mm -hmm. you know, you guys have hit this, uh, this great milestone on your journey. Talk to us about what uh, your plans are for generational wealth or what you're thinking now that you guys are getting yourself into such a, a, a positive territory uh, financially. What does this mean for you and your children in the future as well? I think for our kids growing up, it will be trying to demonstrate positive money reinforcements of money habits of don't spend more than you make and kind of trying to teach them that as they grow up and since we're in hopefully the position as they get to young adulthood, be able to support them more younger, pay for help pay for their school, help them with different bills that pop up. So before it even gets to any type of inheritance, I can help support them at a younger age to give them the freedom to make more choices that they want without fear. Just when it gets to the end, like depending on how they are with money, I would want to give them enough that they can, have freedom in their life, but not enough where they don't have to do anything with their life. Cause I think that would be a disservice to them too. And I don't want to set them up for failure. So, yeah, I, I love that. It's almost, uh, you sounds like you're more interested in providing them the knowledge and the know-how of how to build their own generational wealth than to give them a pile of money to say, here's your wealth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, yeah. I've definitely agreed that if you're bad with money and you get a lot of money, you're going to be bad with a lot of money. So <laughs> just practice being good in small things, then you can move on to bigger things. That's so. that's so true. Yeah, it's it's like the the fastest way to build wealth is slowly, right? <laughs> yeah, I love Sadly that. true. It is, it is. Well, let's talk about now you guys are nearing millionaire status, which is so exciting. Talk to us about your goals and dreams that you have as a couple, you and Carly. So we don't typically buy a whole bunch of like expensive things. We like going on uh, travel or just having a staycation to get away for a day or two with either just the wife and I or me and the kids. 
And so that's kind of more where we prioritize putting our money. It's just as we've moved through the process, it's allowed a lot more freedom. Like when our girl, when my firstborn was firstborn, we eventually took her to Great Wolf Lodge. There was a lot more like, okay, well, we have $5 to spend on the dessert here. If she gets one bowl and now as we've gone through, it's like, okay, we're, we can relax the strings a little bit. Now let's just relax, enjoy the vacation. And we know we're okay because we're not overspending in all these other areas. Yeah. So it's more continuing to build experiences that they can look back on versus giving them or having whatever I want. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Just uh, feeling a little bit more margin in your budget, a little bit more space, a little more autonomy to kind of use the money, how you, how you see fit. This is fantastic. Joshua, somebody's listening and they're inspired about how you've grown your, no your net worth over the years and they want to do this too. What's one piece of advice that you would leave them? Maybe they're just getting started on their net worth building journey. Maybe they're closer to the zero mark and they want to build up to this near million dollar net worth uh, mark like you have. What's what's one piece of advice you'd have for them? I think kind of that whole saying of how do you eat an elephant a bite at a time? Learn or just focus on what's one hour of your time or what's 1% of your salary and figure out in your budget, where do you, where can you tighten a little bit to just get that extra $20 a month. And maybe you're just saving one hour of your time a month. That's fine. Start there. Maybe next month you can get two hours or an hour and a half. Like it just gives you a small line in the sand to try and, step forward slowly but surely and then you'll eventually get to the point where it's you have a thousand dollars what 60 percent of people can't come up with a thousand dollars in the case of emergency so you might be wanting to try to get to a million but you're going to be crossing a whole bunch of milestones that a lot of people are trying to get to getting to that point so keeping in mind the benefit or the privilege that you're getting to have money in case of an emergency it's frustrating when an emergency happens and then it wipes you back to square one, but you had the money in the case of an emergency that you wouldn't have had otherwise. So keeping that in mind that it's still allowing you more freedom by controlling your money and making sure it's ready if you need it is what I would focus on. Because I feel like anytime there's any articles that come out online where it's talking about, I have $100,000 and how do I... I do this and then you read the comment section and it's almost always a ton of people being like, ah, it could never happen. A million dollars won't be worth that much in retirement. And it's like, <laughs> that's a million dollars that you don't have in retirement. So I'll, I'll take it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, uh, I think the quick reaction for a lot of folks is, um, naysaying, you know, just saying, ah, never possible. You know, it couldn't happen to me or wow, you know, yeah, it wouldn't be nice to make that kind of money. But what we can do for all of us and what I try to do with those comments, and maybe we'll do some of those on this video <laughs> that's coming out is just what can you do? What what small thing can you do today? Can you save 50 bucks? Can you put away that into a, in a savings account? Can you then make that an automated habit where it starts to build up? Because instead yeah. of saying what's not possible, just think about what is possible and start to move towards that. So this is fantastic <laughs> advice, Joshua. And I know this has worked well for you because it's proof that you've done it. <laughs> and uh, you guys are in such a great spot today. Well, Joshua, thank you for being transparent with us today. And then uh, again, online as well, if people have any questions, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. If you're inspired to grow your net worth after hearing that awesome story, you should check out Empower's free net worth tracker. This is the same tracker that my wife and I used to grow our net worth from negative $50,000 to over a million dollars in just 10 years. You can access that using the links below or click the link in our video description. If you want to get inspired to grow your net worth even more, check out this next video coming up.